Our next is Tony Antonio. He's our official reclamador. Bienvenidos a Mundo Magnifico de la Poesía. And Tony is um, in Latin America where I grew up. Uh, and even in the University of Costa Rica, the reclamadores were always very important. They were, they always started every event out with either jokes or stories or poetry or commentary, but they were like the royalty. So Tony is our official Lake <coughs> Commodore. Welcome, Tony. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. I'm reverting back to one of my very, very favorite poets, Robert Swanson. <coughs> the easiest way to describe Robert Swanson's writing is to say he did for the loggers of the BC coast what Robert Service did for the gold miners of the Klondike. In 1936, Swanson jumped from the logging camp circuit to government service as boiler inspector and later chief railway inspector and safety inspector as well, roles in which he probably did more to make BC's woods safe than any other person. When truck, trucks came in to use and companies couldn't find a, a fail-safe air braking system, Swanson invented one himself and lived to see it adopted as the standard all over North America. When the new diesel ro locomotive started creating mayhem at, hi at highway crossings, horns as the sound of an approaching train, Swanson drew on his childhood love of train sounds to devise a tuned hexatone air horn whistled and made the crossing safe once again. That invention too, he lived to see, copied all over the industrialized world to the point he was able to establish himself in private business manufacturing turned whistle systems when he retired from government service. It was Swanson, ladies and gentlemen, whom our Prime Minister Lester Pearson called upon to fit the centennial train with a whistle that played Oh Canada <laughs> for the country's 100th birthday in 1967 and whose handiwork is familiar to thousands of Vancouver residents hearing that same patriotic blast from the top of the BC Hydro building every day at 12 o'clock noon. Having rambled on, I've chosen one of his shorter poems. I've always liked this. He calls it, A Logger's Ten Commandments. <laughs> These are the sacred commandments, the rules by which loggers abide. Laws of a life in the forest as true as the laws of the tide. Hearken and profit then, stranger, Hear ye the laws I confide. Never sit down at the table to eat where another should sit. This is the cause for a battle that man is just liable to quit. Wander not into the cookhouse before the gut ham hammer ru has run. Cooks, as a rule, swing a cleaver. <laughs> They're bitter and flippant of tongue. <laughs> Grab as the food is passed by you. For service, don't bother your mate. Speed is the essence of matters. Your saucer should rest on your plate. Praise nothing that's new till it's proven. But wait for the super to praise. Supers have alone have the brain power to merit a thing by its ways. Of a man you should speak as you find him. 
though others may brand him a cur, it may be his good reputation has been marred by a slanderous slur. Money when saved is a worry, so never your pleasure deprive. <laughs> Live for today and be happy. Tomorrow may never so arrive. <laughs> be lavish when spending your money as a cheapskate. Never be caught. There's nothing so low as the logger who says he is broke when he's not. Lines are your friends if you know them, but Deadly as bullets in night, in flight. Give them respect in your distance and never stand in the height, the blight. Timber when falling means danger. Stand well above in the clear. Sharp lookout will cheat undertakers who gloat on a widow's sad tear. Care you should have in the summer Fire in a forest is crime. Fire can destroy in a minute the growth of a century's time. Now these are the sacred commandments, the rules by which loggers abide. Laws of a life in the forest as true as the laws of the tide. Break them and suffer then, stranger. They're ancient and proven and tried. Thank you.